Michael Peterson again, and this is today's art lesson. Today's art lesson, we're going to be talking about making our colors sing by surrounding them with gray, in a sea of gray. And so we're going to do a demonstration, a very quick demonstration today on making our colors sing by surrounding them with a sea of gray. Now, I, what I've got here is I've got this very rough sketch of a young man here, blonde hair, and this, is, this sketch is very rough, it is very rustic, and is not meant to be finished at all, but we're gonna use this to check and see how well this uh, philosophy works, or how well this principle works. So, I've got you know some rough, very roughed in blonde hair, some very roughed in face here, and so what we're gonna do is we are going to paint in some gray. And so what I've, I've got here on my palette, you can't see the palette because you are looking at the, uh, the painting, but I have got some gray paint here that we are gonna start adding into the background. A uh, little bit stiff on the paint there, so I am going to add some oil to it. I uh, use linseed oil. I've got my palette set up over here on the side and I am talking, I've got the camera right next to me, and I'm talking as we go. Now, here we go. We're going to take, and now, first of all, notice over here how the, uh, the, we've got the black over here, and it helps pop the color, um, but just basically the whole thing looks just a little bit on the dull side. So what we're going to do is we're going to paint some gray over here, now, I have to admit, when I first heard about this, it seemed like a little bit counterintuitive to me, but take a look here, what's happening. As I go up against this color, and you want to kind of fade some of that into the into it, you don't want the painting to look like it's a cardboard cutout against the background here. So, I am painting up into here, and take a look at what's happening with that color right here. It's starting to really pop, as compared to over here, where it... Uh, I mean, the, this color over here just seems to make more sense. It seems to sing over here. It just seems a little bit contrived. So what we're going to do is we're going to just keep painting around like this. I'm going to come around to his hair and once again, um, try to keep from looking like it's a cardboard cutout. Uh, this painting I did here, this, re this really sketchy painting, I did this a few weeks ago. So this paint here is very much dry. And I'm going to add a little bit more oil again to the, the paint. Okay, now let's try it again. A little bit more oil, and let's make this background here flow. Okay, so here we go. Now we're just painting in here, just filling in. And just notice here how, especially once I get this stuff so where it comes in with here and starts looking like it's all part of the painting and kind of soften these edges a little bit here. And take a look at how the colors here start to sing. I mean, they really, really do. And let me just bring this down and I'd like to bring the areas here where they're off. I'd like to have, have a, them make sense to me. Uh, I'm very much into shapes, that sort of thing. You might have noticed that in my paintings. And, um, so here we go. Now we're gonna come around the top here and once again, just keep filling in this color here with this gray. And I am really starting to see some luscious things starting to happen right here as far as making that color sing. It just looks good. And I'm, so far, I'm really pleased with what I see. So let's take and wrap this around here. And we're going some more. And boy, this guy's got really hurly-burly curly hair, doesn't he? Okay, so we're coming in here and we're going to come down to this part of his face here and once again try to keep it from looking, looking like a cardboard cutout. So, and that's kind of interesting to do when you've already got a dry painting that you're working with. Now look at that. I mean, the colors are just starting to look a whole lot more lifelike. They're starting to look a whole lot more glowing. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna just fill in the rest of this and add some more oil, get, get some more uh, flow going into our painting here. So on the background. So let me dab some more oil over here into the colors. 
Okay, now, there we go. This should be, oh yeah, a lot more flow here. Here we go. Okay. Now, I'm going to bring this more in. Now, all of a sudden, this very rough, very rustic looking thing in a matter of just a few minutes starts looking a great deal more finished, doesn't it? Now, so let me get some more in here. And what we're gonna do here is once we get this filled in, then I'm gonna show you just another little trick that will help uh, bring this to life, particularly this background. Because right now, this background, it's making the, the colors look good. The uh, gray is making the um, skin colors look a lot more alive. Okay, keep it from looking like it's a cardboard cutout. Here we go. One of the things I find, too, that helps out a lot is always use a brush that's too big. That way, you don't get into too much detail that you don't need to get into at that point. And right now, this is, like I said, a very rustic, very rough painting, and we don't need a whole lot of detail in here. Okay, now let me get that little corner up there, and we will be done with that. Now this is just, oh my goodness, this looks so much better. Uh, just in the process of right here, take this right here, dab this, Okay, so we have got a gray background, our colors here looking so much more alive. So, so, so much more alive. I'm really tickled with how, what's happening with that. Now, one of the things I want to point out is in this particular person's case, we have a lot of red uh, skin tones, uh, red undertones in the skin, you know, like muted reds, you know, and I've got a few of them that are a little bit more emphasized. And I usually don't emphasize them that much, except for when I'm in uh, a very, very quick uh, type of a painting, and I am just splashing on the colors, <clears throat> sand splashing on everything there. Let me take care of that little spot right there, there. And so what I'm going to do is, as a lot of you may already know, the on the opposite of the color wheel of red is green. Green is the opposite of red. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this seem a little bit ev even more by adding a green over here. But what I'm going to do, because we've got these medium to light reddish type of colors, I'm going to add a dark green here. What I want, I don't want it to look Christmassy. I don't want it to look like um, Santa Claus and Christmas presents and stuff like that. And I don't want the green to pull away from the, uh, the painting of the young man here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a very dark and muted gray green. Okay, now you may not be able to tell on this video, and I hope you can, but I guess we'll see. Uh, on the, what I've got here on my brush here is a very dark gray uh, muted green. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start painting that into here. And I'm going to start adding a little bit of variety to this background. Okay, now I've got plenty of oil in the background here, and there's a lot of flow, and so I can do this and get some really nice brush strokes going here. Now, let's just go on into here, and what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it a little bit darker on this side here, and then have it a little bit lighter on this side over there, on the other side. So that way it adds a little bit of interest, a little bit of... Uh, variety in the background so it isn't this real flat type of gray, uh, gray that we see here so just trying to get a little bit of life in here now one of the things you want to do when you are painting is you don't want to blend it so much that you just blend all the life out of it because the oil paints when they have some brush strokes in there and they have something interesting happening then they are alive they're much more alive and so I'm just bringing this around here just a little bit more and pulling this in and trying to not have the background take away too much from the, from the foreground, but I'm trying to get a little bit of variety in here, make this look like a painting. Now, one of the things that I go by is that I'm a painter, so let's make this look like a painting. You know, it's like... Uh, a uh, thing I learned from Ben Lustenhauer, who's a man in, uh, in Spain, who's Norwegian-born, and he is a wonderful portrait painter, 
And he, that's one of the things he's big on is that you have brush strokes and it, the brush strokes are okay, they're good. And they add a lot of life to the painting. Okay, so we've got, now you can see this starting to kind of come alive here. Now what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna kind of pull this around by this young man's shoulders here and just kind of bring a little bit in here too. Just kind of pull that in just a bit. But now I'm gonna try something here. I am going to reach underneath the camera and wash out my brush just a bit. Okay, and dry it off with a paper towel. And you can't see me doing any of this, but that's what I'm doing. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start adding a little bit of white to kind of highlight and start pulling out some of the, make some of the grays a little bit lighter over here. So once again, to try to add a little bit of variety uh, into the back of the background of the painting. And this one here being more or less like, you know, this would be something like you would handle like a more formal portrait. And uh, so, and plenty of oil in the background here so we can do some blending, still leaving brush strokes in. Okay, so let's just bring this in a little bit more. Try to lighten up this side just a bit more. Okay, now, so here we have it. We're getting a little bit more in here. So all of a sudden, instead of that real uh, stark background that we had before, which is just the black and the white of the, the canvas, the primed canvas, we are now looking at something that all of a sudden starts looking a great deal more like a finished painting. And uh, this painting here, and this took, to, took us, what, a grand total of a, a few minutes, 10 minutes, something like that. But notice how these paint colors here, the face colors, now just feel bright and much, much more vivid. And that is because it's surrounded by this sea of gray. Now, one of the things you can do with this is you, for example, I brought in a very muted green gray in here. You can also bring in brown grays. You can bring in uh, some blue grays or whatever like that. It's just some stuff that might add to um, the colors that you're using. And a lot of it just depends on the situation and depends on what it is you're trying to do with this. So, whoops, that right there and Get this thing over right here. I'm just kind of picking and fiddling with this thing just a bit and just trying to pull this background into the hair and into, okay, here we go. And just trying to make this so it looks like it's not a cardboard cutout on the, on the canvas there. Okay, anyway, very quick demonstration how using a gray background and doing some variety in the gray will help make the facial color colors sing. So I uh, hope this is uh, something that you've, uh, is, you find good. And please feel free to do this to your own paintings if that's what you want. And you take care and we'll see you in another day. Take care, bye-bye.